Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Let's do another video on the lathe. I'm super excited. It's going to be a lot like the last video we did, but what I've done now is I've got the boring bar holders set up, which also hold our drills. So we're going to take a piece of 12L14, we're going to turn the outside, we're going to measure it for accuracy this time, which is going to tie into another video we're about to shoot on setting the offsets with Path Pilot and the Tormach lathe. But then what we're going to do is we're going to spot it, drill it, and then really cool, this machine will do rigid tapping. So it's got a encoder that will synchronize the Z axis to the spindle. So we're gonna take a quarter 20 tap, put her in, pull her out, should be awesome. Um, yeah, let's dive in. So, so there are folks that are bad at creating drawings and solid works, and I can only aspire to be that good one day because I'm frankly horrendous, but this will do the trick. And I only made this to help walk through the conversation a little easier. You could have just as easily done this on a piece of paper. But here's what we want to do. We want a piece of uh, steel that'll be, in the end, 1.25 inches long. We're going to take the first length here that's uh, 580, and we're going to thread that half 13 with chamfers on both sides. We're actually going to do a little trick to make that chamfer. We'll turn this back side down to 610 from, we're starting with 625 or 5 eighths, and we'll do a groove, which I didn't have set up last time. I got that figured out. So we'll have a groove here for thread relief, and then on the center here, we will drill, spot drill and tap for quarter 20. I don't have a call out on how deep that is, but you, you'll see when we take a look on uh, the conversational. I went ahead and made a list, and it's funny, the conversational is so stinking easy to use, but it is amazing. Even a simple part like this, we're gonna face it, cut two different OD diameters, cut a chamfer, cut our groove, thread, and then spot drill tap, and then part the whole thing off. So it looks like a lot, but you're gonna see it's uh, pretty darn simple and pretty quick to make. All right, folks, let's bang through the conversational here. Super easy. We're going to part it. Uh, we're actually start at 50 thou positive, and then we'll end at Z0. I'll walk you through that when we actually do the physical setup here in a second. Post to file, we'll call it temp, save, overwrite. Now what we will do is, first thing we'll do is the OD turn. So we're gonna start it at uh, Z0, because that's where we're at, and we're gonna turn it back to the 750 that we have on the print, and that's gonna be the sort of threaded area. So point 0.75, start at 5 eighths, end at, we're gonna actually end at 495, a little bit under half inch for the threaded area. Append a file, uh, yep, and then We'll turn down the next section, which will finish off the part. And so we'll start at negative 0.75, which is where we ended. And we'll turn all the way back to about 1.4. We don't, we can only have to go to 1.25, uh, but our parting tool is actually gonna come in from 1.75 back a little bit more. So I like having it a little bit more turned down. So Z end will be one, negative 1 1.4. And the final um, X there will be 610 per the print. Uh, append to file. Okay, so we've got the two ODs turned down. Next thing we want to do while we still have tool one in is chamfer. So chamfer, this basically stays set up for me. All you need to basically make sure is you've got the right X diameter. Uh, technically, we've turned it down to 495, but I have 0.5 in there. Plenty good. Append to file. Now, we're going to cut our thread relief section, and normally that would be called a groove, but I want that back chamfer in there. So rather than groove it, we're going to fake it with a part because part gives us that back chamfer option. So we're gonna start it at negative 0.75, and all we have to do is set the initial X, still 5 eighths, the final X, uh, 375, and we've got that edge break in there. Should work great, we'll, we'll see. Append to file. Now, yep, now we're ready for the threads. So, so it couldn't be easier, you just choose the threads from the drop down menu, how many passes you want, we'll do eight which is pretty conservative, but should be fine. And we're gonna start from Z0, and we only need the, the threads back uh, 580, 0.58, but we're actually gonna go a little bit past that just so we make sure um, the thread goes all the way through. So we'll choose negative 0.62, append to file, and next we are ready to do spot drill tap. So spot drill is number six, so we'll choose that. We're going to Z end negative 0.06, so that'll be a 60 thou spot, pretty simple. Append to file. Drill is number eight. Uh, we will peck it at 70 thou. We'll go back to 600. That's fine. 
I'm not focusing right now on feeds and speeds, to be honest with you folks, and that's not a good excuse. I need to, to focus on that more, but the truth is it's been cutting pretty darn well. Um, steel almost better than aluminum, which makes me think I've got, happen to have good luck on speeds and feeds for steel, um, less so than aluminum, but I also think some of the inserts here are a little better for steel. A lot more to come on that. Okay, append that to file, and then last thing is the tap. So we just have to switch to tap, and we will tap back to say 350, and you just have to choose uh, or tell it the threads per inch, and that's what synchronizes the X with the spindle. So we're doing quarter 20, so that's 20. We'll choose 500 RPMs, it's tool six. We're good to go, append to file, let's make some chips. Okay, so to set it up, I've got tool one in there, that's our, our master tool. I'm just gonna jog up pretty closely. Like so, and then you can actually just open the collet closer, push the stock forward. Now when you close the collet closer, you're gonna back it off a few thou, but what we're gonna do is set that point, not at Z zero, but at Z of 0.05. And what that means is you're actually gonna cut back about 50 thou off of this to get a clean face. In production, I might try to tighten that up because in theory it's wasting material, but it's just a safer way to create your own you know, Z zero plane and not, and not worry about it. So with that, folks, let's rock and roll. Okay, turning down the first section to 500. Pretty cool little chip, right, folks? I don't, uh, I don't even think there are chip breakers ground into this, but <laughs> I think that's really cool. Uh, and it is good to avoid the long stringy things in the bird's nests. This is a 5,000 cleanup pass. So one of the things I've tried to focus on is setting the correct tool length, and that's what really gives you your precision. So hopefully, when we take this part off, we'll be within a thou or so. All right, the machine's capable of it. Again, it's just a question of the correct tool height setup, and I'll, I'll talk about how you can tweak that and adjust that to get it honed right in. Wasn't intuitive to me as a mill guy. Turning that back section down to, to 610, all the way back to, I think what we say, 1.4 inches. So even in theory, if we're off on the nominal on these two diameters, they should at least be off the same amount relative to each other. That tells you more about the machine precision than the tool offset settings. So I think next we just do that quick chamfer on the front of it. I'm actually really excited to see how this GoPro footage looks. We were playing around with different places to mount it and I think this is a good one, but uh, we'll see with the coolant and the turret and, and all that. Yep, tool change to, yep. So now we're gonna cheat by faking a groove by actually calling it a part. Looks good. So it'll come in a little bit, and then it'll come in and do a that back chamfer there and come down to 3 eighths. No chatter at all, which is really nice. I've had a lot of luck. You know, on manual lays, a lot of times you don't have the right recipe down for parting, you'll know it. Now, the single best thing perhaps in the modern world, single point CNC threading, I think is just bonkers. I mean, just bonkers. You see, I've got one of those brass coolant things. I just threw it on. Uh, I got to add them on a few other tools just to make sure you get the coolant in the right spot. Beautiful chip. We'll see how this fits with the, the thread fit with the nut when we're done, but I, I could watch this all day long. I think, yeah, now we're, yeah, we're already on here now to uh, spotting and then drilling. Nice peck job. I got to get the coolant line aimed here. You know, when you're peck drilling, you do want to flush those chips out and, and try to dissipate the heat. This should be pretty forgiving, but again, something I want to improve. And now, folks, rigid tapping. Watch this. Boom, boom. Just that simple. Come in and part off the back, including a back chamfer, and hopefully we got a part. It'll kiss first, come in a little, and then go ahead and give that back chamfer as it parts all the way through to center line.
No noise at all. Listen to that, folks. Isn't that beautiful? There she is. Folks, how awesome is that? Let's take a look at the actual part itself. The cut quality, I think, is beautiful. And we're just using, like, you know, guessing on speeds and feeds and, and you know, just sort of the regular old inserts, nothing dedicated. The threads are beautiful. We take a look at the thread fit. The thread fit is, is phenomenal. No, I mean, no rock at all. Absolutely on there. We go ahead and try the tapped hole out with a quarter 20 socket head cap screw. I mean, beautiful. So just think about this, folks. I'm so excited about the potential of this lathe. Things that are going to happen, we'll have an automatic collet closer so you can make this like a faux production machine where you've got the uh, bar sock being pulled out. We'll figure out some sort of a, a parts catcher so they don't drop into the coolant bin. Um, there goes my GoPro. Um, I no longer own a Tormach turret lathe. I own what I call the, uh, what I come up with? Garrett lathe gang turret combo. I've got a couple of gang holders down here, so we're going to try a hybrid version. The gang should be great for, for different drills and taps. They'll probably be like hot swappable, if you will. Um, but folks, so much more to come. I'm so happy with this machine. Um, I, I'm also being critical of myself. You know, the threads, I said they're beautiful. They do have slight tears on them. That could just be the inserts getting tired or worn out or wrong speeds and feeds. We'll figure it out. And I want to get the nub on the back side down to a little bit less. But again, we'll figure that out. So folks, as always, I appreciate your viewership. I appreciate the thumbs, the comments, uh, the thumbs up, the comments, the likes, and the shares. Take care. See you soon. <laughs> so we just went to lunch, and I realized I forgot to measure the damn lathe part. So part we just turned, set of calipers. We should be at 610. Oop. Look at that. 610.5. Five tenths over. Works for me, folks. Take care. Enjoy. See you next week.